Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 11 on using the fabulous SketchUp CAD software. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a new tool that we haven't used before called the Follow Me tool. And we're going to use this tool to create more, more complicated 3D designs. And I want you to think about the designs that we've done so far. If you've been following along with us, we have made some uh, little devices like this, okay? And then remember we made a case for glasses, and then we made a nice little box, okay? Nice little box. The thing to see about all of these designs that we've done so far, they're kind of like fundamentally two-dimensional two -dimensional in their design in that we take a two-dimensional object and we extrude it. Now if we have something like this, you can see that we took a two-dimensional design, extruded it, had another two-dimensional shape, extruded it, and so we can take different two-dimensional shapes and extrude them on top of each other, and we can get something that begins to look kind of complicated, but still it's fundamentally two-dimensional in, 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 in its nature. So if you want to look at, at what we're going to start talking about now, if you look at something like these elbows, imagine that these are PVC elbow joints. These are fundamentally three-dimensional in nature. And so if you look at these, there is really no way that you could simply go in and create a two-dimensional object and extrude it. Because if you did that, you would just end up with a, uh, with a tube, with a cylinder. So how do we do something like this? Well, let's just jump in and I will show you how to do this design. I think even though these are pretty complicated, I think that this will go pretty uh, pretty quickly. Let me get let me get everything situated here. Okay, I believe we are ready to go here. All right, so let me start by uh, pulling this over, and I will erase it so you can play along at home. All right, so the way this works is. Uh, I just lost my okay the way this works is we're going to create the fundamental shape that we're going to create to extrude is a circle but we've got to create a path to extrude it along so instead of just using the push pull tool to bring it up or down we're going to create a path to draw it along and what it is is it's a line and an arc and a line. So let's see if we can make that. We're going to start therefore by drawing a rectangle. So let's get the rectangle tool. We will go to the origin, click, and then come out and click and we're going to make that 80 comma 80. Okay, and I am working in millimeters and so if you guys are playing along at home make sure that you're in millimeters. Now let's zoom in on this. Okay, now I want to create a rounded edge on this corner. And so who is your friend? The tape measure is your friend. I'm going to come out from the origin, come out, click, and say 40. So I have a guide mark at 40. And then I'm going to start there, click, come up, click, and say 40. Okay, and so now that will be the center point of my circle which I will use then to be one of the corners on this box. So I will get the circle tool now and I will let it snap to the guide point. Okay, it's on the guide point. Click, come out, and then come all the way down to this guide point. You see I'm on that guide point. I say click. And I don't want to just type in a radius of 40. I want to go to the guide point and click because I want this to actually touch the square. And it's kind of a subtle thing, but uh, SketchUp is not drawing real circles, it's drawing segments, okay? And so if you're not careful, you can draw the right radius, but it might not actually intersect that point. Just a little tip. That's why I come down and physically snap to it. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to create the path. So I will uh, come in and I will get the erase tool, okay? And I am going to erase this segment and I'm going to erase this segment. Okay, I will erase uh, this segment and this segment and that segment and that segment and uh, this segment and this segment. Okay, so do you see now that I've got this path that comes like this? 
So if I put a circle right here and have it follow that path, I'll get that elbow. So I need to draw a circle, but I don't want the circle along, I don't want the circle along the path. I want the circle perpendicular to the path. So I need to change my view. So you can get your uh, change view tool here and you can spin it around. Okay, I want to be looking almost straight down that axis because I want the circle to be perpendicular and I want it to infer. Now I don't want to look straight down because I want it to make sure I can start right on that end point. So let me get the circle tool now. And uh, you see now it would draw in the same plane as the path with that uh, little blue circle. So I got to come on it a little bit. Uh, I got to come on it a little more straight on and then boom you see it's now showing me that it is perpendicular to the path so I'm gonna click on the endpoint so I'll click I'll come out I'll click and I want the radius to be 20 millimeters okay so now I have a radius that is 20 millimeters now this is gonna be like the end of the tube so this tube would then extrude out along that path but if I'm gonna extrude it I know that I'm gonna want a hole so I might as well put the hole in the circle so that my solid will have a hole in it so what do I use I use the offset tool I select the offset tool I come up to the edge <coughs> click come in click how Thick, do I want the whole wall thickness? I want the whole wall thickness to be six. So now I type in six, enter. So now that wall will have a thickness of six. Now before I extrude it along the path, I might as well get rid of that center part and that way I will extrude a shape with a hole. So I will get my selection tool, select on the middle, select, now I've got a hole. Let's spin around. Okay, so what do I have here? okay I have a path along here I have a path and then I have an object a 2d shape that I want to follow that path so step one <clears throat> you got to show the path that you want to follow <clears throat> so I click here and you see that just the straight part turns blue and so these segments are not connected together so I select the straight line I come over here I select shift and select the curve okay so now I have the curve and the straight part and now I come up here and shift and click and now I have the straight part I have the curve and I have the straight part so to do an extrusion along a path to use the follow me tool you first select the path okay the path is selected now after selecting the path I get the follow me tool which is this one right here follow me okay I've already told it the path that I want to follow now I just have to show it the two-dimensional surface that I want to extrude so I come right here and then I just click on that and boom look at that now if I turn around hopefully we'll have a hole in this okay yeah so look we got an elbow now when we have this elbow I want them to plug into each other so on one side I want the outside diameter to be a little bit smaller and on the other side I want the inside diameter to be bigger so that we've got a little lip that these things will plug into each other plus I want to leave a little bit of tolerance because I want them to have a little bit of, of slip in there so I can actually press them together so I wouldn't want the outside diameter to be exactly the inside diameter of the other that the, the fit would be too tight so how do I create another circle in here I get the offset tool I come here I click and I come in and I click again now I've got to give it the dimension if they were exactly the same I would say three and three but I, I want to leave a little tolerance so I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner on this outside wall so instead of three I'm gonna say 2.9 enter that did not work let's try that again okay come here click 2.9 enter all right so what that's saying is from here to here is 2.9 which means from here to here is going to be 3.1 but I'm going to extrude this in and that will leave my little bit of tolerance so I'm going to select this face and then I'm going to get the push pull tool and so I'm going to start pushing and then I'm going to click and I'm going to say I want that to be 35 
Okay, so 35 millimeters deep. All right. So now if I make the outside of this other one 3 and this one is 2.9, that would leave a little bit of tolerance. So let's come over here. All right. And so we will say we're interested in this face. We will get the offset tool. We will come down and this one we're going to make 3. Say 3 enter. All right. Now this one I want to extrude the outside. So I say select the outside, get the push pull tool, select it, and then what did we go back? We went back 35. Enter. Okay. That uh that is not right. Edit undo. Okay. I want to go back the other way is the problem. Okay, so I go like that and then I type in 35 enter. All right, so let's spin this around. Look at that. So you see this would be able to plug into that. Now notice I've got some kind of flat faces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say soften smooth edges. Okay. Now do you see how I got rid of that and made that nice and smooth now? Look at that. We have made a most excellent PVC style elbow. So what I'm going to do now is I want to make more than one of these at a time. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to select everything, right mouse click, and I'm going to say uh, make a group. Okay, so now this is a group, so everything happens together in a group, right? So I don't have to be dealing with individual pieces. I've got a group now. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get my move tool and I'm going to move this and I'm going to tap control so it makes a copy and then I'm going to keep it aligned there. Okay, now I've got two of them. Now before I make it, I like to make things closer together because on a 3D printer you're always struggling to have your build plate perfectly flat and so uh, you want to keep your build plate flat but at the same time it makes things easier if you print things that are closer together. So I want to kind of flip this thing around so I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say flip along the groups red and then I'm going to right mouse click and say flip along groups green and now I've got some Something that I can kind of bring in and print these things a little bit closer together. Okay. Uh, okay, so that is really great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send these two uh, these uh, two pieces. I'm going to send them to our Prusa Mark II i3 printer and I'm going to send them to our Raise 3D N2 Plus printer. And so I'm going to print this on both uh, both of the printers. So uh, just uh, give me just a second. I will pause the video and I will be back in just a second. Okay guys, I am back and uh, I have successfully printed uh, these two objects and so let's take a look at this really uh, really quick so you see here is the design let me get out of your way here is the design and now let's look at the actual 3d parts that we printed boom okay look at that this example was off of the uh, raised 3d printer and what you're going to find when you, you know, like we use the push-pull tool to create a more complicated 3D objects. As you make these more complicated 3D objects, you're going to see that they become a little bit more difficult to print because the 3D printer really likes to print simple straight extrusions. And when you start generating designs like this, you start creating overhangs that become a challenge for the, uh, for the uh, 3D printer to print. And so I printed these on on the raised 3D, you can see that the top side came out really nice, but on the underside, you can see that you got a little bit of roughness on there, and that's as it's trying to print like this, it doesn't have anything to print onto, and so it's kind of like coming out, and you're getting a little bit of a rough edge. Also, did not get perfect roundness in the uh, in the uh, device. If you'd printed it like this, that part would have been perfectly round, but as it tries to create it, 
uh, without without really uh, the proper support you can see that it was a little bit hard but what we do see is these things uh, let's see you see I can push them together you know I can make different shape things so you see I actually got a nice uh, a nice uh, fit this could be like a demonstration of maybe something that you would, you know, a, a rapid prototype of something later you would actually manufacture in uh, using injection molding. But you could get a quick look at your design with the 3D printer. Or what you could do is you could do something like imagine, uh, you know, something, a, a, a track that a marble would run down in. You could make these segments to make some, uh, some interesting uh, demonstration projects. We'll also say that we uh, printed these things on the Prusa i3 and I will have to say that uh, even though the uh, Raise 3D was a uh, $4,000 printer and the Prusa uh, was a uh, $800-$900 printer on this particular design I thought the Prusa did better I think that the profile was rounder and I was able to get things that would clean up a little bit better and so I will have to say both of these would would suit my needs but I really felt like that I got a better uh, a better prototype out of the uh, Pressa printer okay so what we learned today is we learned that as you want to start getting more shapes you, uh, more complicated shapes you use the push-pull tool okay you use the push-pull tool and in order to use the push-pull tool you first create a path you then create the 2d shape then you select the path number one you select the path then you get the the uh, follow me tool and then you click on the surface that you want to follow so we've learned how to use this uh, this follow tool which is kind of like a, a, a push-pull tool for a more complicated shape okay hope you guys enjoyed this uh, if you if you liked it think about giving us a thumbs up down below think about subscribing to the channel think about sharing this on your social media because I, I uh, would also really like to hear your comments down below are you guys really following along sometimes when I get out in these further lessons I wonder if I've kind of lost everybody but if you're if you're tuning in if you're going through these uh, this series I would really appreciate hearing uh, from you down below okay this is Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys 